Hello everybody, I'm Gleb and this is my 5G course on IoT Understanding channel. As for today, I would like to talk about supplementary uplink or uh, 5G and R decoupling. Actually, um, this is the same, this is absolutely the same because supplementary uplink it refers to uh, terminology in 3GPP specifications but um, 5G uplink downlink decoupling uh, that more commonly used in vendors documents in academic research so nowadays uh, in mobile networks we have two major problems the first problem is uh, there is an increasing trend in uh, changing traffic ratio between downlink and uplink uh, nowadays, people uh, send in and upload in more information even, uh, even than downloading information. Sometimes uh, this is a real case. And uh, originally, mobile networks was uh, created to deliver content. And... Um, this is actually a paradigm shift, I would say, because um, this is not so usual. This is uh, very uncommon for mobile networks, but it, it is becoming a reality. And the second problem in uplink is imbalance between downlink and uplink signal quality uh, in particular point of uh, space. And this problem actually is even more common for uh, millimeter waves, for uh, high frequencies in 5G, because um, in uplink direction, uh, like in my example, uh, the user equipment um, can struggle to send data uh, at the cell edge uh, when we use millimeter waves or C-band, like in this example. Uh, and in this case, 5G uplink decoupling can help to solve this problem. So, uh, when the quality of signal is good and user equipment is served by a uh, small cell, by uh, C-band, for example, uh, the UE may use the same cell in uplink and in downlink direction. But when uh, at the cell edge or uh, with poor quality of um, signal downlink signal strength is enough to receive information from base station but um, if you wants to send information it isn't enough uh, the base station can't hear uh, the UE and in this case network can allow user equipment to use uplink from different band, from lower band. And we call it uh, officially supplementary uplink. Uh, for example, uh, 1.8 uh, gigahertz. Actually, all uh, supplementary uplink uh, bands are you can find in originally 3GPP specifications and uh, all of them are below 2 gigahertz all of them related to low bands and of course uh, in this case you may improve the situation and uh, with more probability to send all necessary information to uh, to uh, base station because um, the uh, signal strength is uh, much more power than uh, we use a C-band and R. But, but the coupling and carrier ag aggregation, it's not the same. It's actually not the same because uh, user equipment can use only one uh, channel in uplink. And uh, this is either the same like uh, like usual operation or downlink uh, is operating on C band 
but uplink operation is on a lower band. So, um, what about overlapping PU-CCH or PU-SDH uh, uh, channel? Um, this overlapping actually is uh, scheduled, um, can be avoided and uh, scheduled uh, by network in time domain uh, by scheduling. And um, PU-CCH channel uh, overlap avoidance can be um, implemented by the special PUCCH configuration in base station. So, uh, this is uh, actually uh, one of the possible examples how uh, these two major problems can be solved. Now, let's look at uh, advantages and disadvantages of that technology. So, uh, as for now, let's look at 5G decoupling advantages. And uh, the first of all, 5G uplink downlink decoupling, this is a real and standardized uh, solution. Uh, this is a simple solution, actually. The second, uh, using low frequencies for uplink transmission, we can reduce user equipment transmission power. And this, of course, uh, would be better for uplink uh, signal to noise uh, plus interference ratio. And uh, this will le lead to less interference at cell edge coverage. Of course, when we use uh, different uh, bands for downlink and for uplink, uh, we can have uh, some uh, so called independent load balancing, and probably we can gain from that as well. Uh, the next option is um, better throughput, latency, and uh, the better, uh, the more probability for access. And actually, all of these uh, three things is a consequence of a better uplink uh, signal to noise plus interference ratio. And the last one, but probably uh, one of the important uh, advantage of 5G and our decoupling technology is less investments in 5G rollout, especially for dense urban, when um, the most operators will use uh, C-band technology for, uh, as, a, as a main band for uh, NR technology. And uh, in this case, in downlink, delivering information will be still uh, using C-band, uh, and uh, there will be enough uh, throughput and latency for that. But in uplink, in case of um, uh, high penetration in indoor scenarios, uh, in a low uh, quality of signal in uplink, in uplink will be used low frequencies, uh, below 2 gigahertz actually, and uh, this will lead to uh, less new site deployments for uh, 5G rollout. Actually, uh, there is a high probability that amount of sites will be uh, practically the same as in LTE if we use 5G uh, and our decoupling technology. And as for now, let's look uh, for uh, let's look at disadvantages of that technology and some negative things. So now let's look at some possible negative aspects while deploying 5G uh, decoupling technology. And the first aspect is there is a possible NRLT collision uh, because there is a possibility that low band NR can uh, somehow influence on other LTE bands um, and uh, produce some um, intermodulation products. And of course, before deploying uh, that solution, uh, you should very cautiously uh, consider that fact with the current uh, network. The second thing is beamforming. What about beamforming and decoupling? Um, as far as I could understand, beamforming is um, 
is impossible to use uh, in this case because how to estimate uh, downlink channel with another uplink uh, band and with another uplink um, reference signals so there is no um, there is no uh, reciprocity as in TDD solution, as in uh, millimeter waves TDD and R. And in that case, it's possible to use beamforming. But in, in this case, I think no, or at least it is very debatable. And if you know actually the answer to, this, to that question, you can um, send me your version in the comments below. So the third thing is 5G uplink decoupling uh, not so clear advantage of um, ENDC operation, dual connectivity operation with or without that decoupling because um, because it's better, it's better to um, use LTE uplink uh, and actually downlink for that. So there is a trade, there is again should be uh, some uh, more research on that before deploying uh, your current non-standalone work um, network with or without uplink decoupling. The next thing, it is not so clear advantage uh, compare with dynamic spectrum sharding solution and actually I have a video uh, about dynamic uh, spectrum sharing technology and you can uh, watch that video here and again um, I suppose to some extent these technologies uh, may compete to each other and before deploying the coupling uh, probably you should consider deploying DSS solution in your network. And the last one, there is no sense of using the full FDD band only for supplementary uplink, only for uh, uplink decoupling. Um, and this is actually um, this is actually the thing that in most of the regions uh, every network, every sub uh, 2 gigahertz networks and bands, they are FDD bands. And uh, there is no much sense of using only uplink in this case. Why not to uh, use, for example, carrier aggregation instead of that. But again, you should uh, very cautiously investigate your network have some uh, test fields in order to understand deploy uh, the coupling in your network or not. So this is, was my short lesson about 5G NR decoupling or supplementary uplink and downlink as we can call it. Um, if you want to know more uh, you can like, subscribe. This motivates me to uh, produce more videos uh, and I would definitely like to share more details on different 5G and IoT topics in my next videos. So, stand by with IoT Understanding channel. Goodbye.